Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 5, Earth's Processes. This is video number 13 on trace fossils. This is the third in our little mini-series on looking at some of the uh, processes associated with fossil formation and this time we're going to focus specifically on different types of trace fossils. So you need to know what trace fossils are and some of the ways that trace fossils may be formed and also evaluate the significance of different types of trace fossils. Trace fossils are not a record of whole organisms or even parts of organisms. They are just traces. They give us some indication of what was happening in previous life, but they tend to fall into one of three key categories. They may be traces of movement of once living organisms. They may be traces of predation and they may also be traces of digestion. And we'll look at each of these in turn. What trace fossils do is they provide indirect evidence of the presence of an organism uh, in its absence. So we sometimes may find the bones or the shells or the hard or soft parts of organisms fossilized somewhere near where these trace fossils are, but we don't always. So therefore, trace fossils can give us a little bit of an indication about the type of organisms that might have been present in a certain area even if we don't find any actual evidence uh, of their from, from the fossil record. So this is the sort of thing when if you're walking along the beach, particularly if you're walking close to the water's edge, you'll leave really nice footprints. And footprints are a trace that you were there. Those footprints often, if they're close to the water's edge, may be washed away by the next uh, wave that comes through, but they may be preserved. And if they're preserved, there's some things that they tell us. They tell us which direction you were walking in. They tell us whether you were alone or whether you were with someone else. If you weren't alone, maybe the number of footprints can tell us how many people were in the group uh, when you were walking along. They don't only tell us the direction you were walking, but they can also give us some indication of how fast you were moving. If we measure the distance between successive footprints, we get a little bit of an idea about how fast a particular organism may have been moving. Also, the depth of the impression left by your footprints may also tell us something about your size and or your weight. So there's actually quite a lot of different areas in which we can collect information just from trace fossils. Trace fossils also have paleoecological implications. Sometimes predators may leave imprints of their teeth on the bones of their prey. There may be certain types of predators that may burrow through shells, leaving nice holes. And if we see predators that do that sort of thing today, we may be able to extrapolate that to what was happening in the past when we see similar types of damage done to uh, fossil shells. We may also see, um, for example, some crabs may use their claws to crack the shells of their prey. Now, sometimes that cracking may not kill the organism, it may just damage the shell. And sometimes when that repairs, in the same sort of way that broken bones can repair, sometimes you can actually see evidence of those original breaks. And this may tell us again something about the types of predators that were around at that particular time. So paleoecological uh, implications abound when we look at trace fossils. And there's another area that provides us information in a paleoecological sense, and that is about digestion. One type of trace fossil that we find are coprolites. And coprolites are basically fossil poop. That is, they tell us something about the diet of the individual organisms who left that behind by being able to have a look at the sorts of things that might be within the fossilized poop, we may be able to determine something about the um, digestive habits, maybe the prey of a particular type of organism. Of course, we have to match that particular um, coprolite to what was the original uh, organism that may have left it behind. But it, when we do, it tells us again something about the ecological relationships in the past, the relationship between predators and prey or the types of plants, for example, that herbivores might have eaten. Trace fossils are another great application of solving the mysteries associated with past life. If we have footprints, we can ask some of these questions, and I've already alluded to these earlier. What type of organism? How tall was the organism? How fast was it moving? Was it alone or was it part of a group? If it was part of a group, were they all about the same age or were they, say, uh, adults and juveniles? 
How heavy were the organisms that made these particular footprints and which direction were they moving? If we find coprolites, we might be able to determine what type of organism might have left them behind, what their diet was, what were some of the features about their digestion, how much did they chew their food before they swallowed, did they left um, the marks of their teeth uh, in any of the material that's left behind. Perhaps maybe even if we get a herbivore, we might get an idea of the types of plants that that particular um, organism was feeding on, and they may tell us something about the um, paleo environment in which that organism was found. Of course, today when we study ecosystems, we know that there's a very strong correlation between the type of climate and the type of vegetation that we find. So looking at this sort of evidence that provides us information about maybe a particular diet that maybe allows us to make some conclusions about the uh, paleoflora that was present may also give us something um, about the type of climate, the type of environment in which these organisms were found. So these are some of the really great mysteries that can be solved using trace fossils. Thanks for watching.